Welcome to the Joy Quota Podcast. I'm Dylan Fole. And I'm Gavin Malcolm. Our guest tonight is Michael Mann, newly professional snowboarder, free ride snowboarder. Really fun conversation. This guy is humble, he's talented, he's driven, and most of all, he's incredibly fun. So please, please enjoy. Did you ever end up getting to do a TED Talk? I know I saw it on your what? Instagram. Yeah, I ended up, they canceled it for I've, COVID. I so, wondered, yeah. Um, but I do have a spot to give mine when they do the next event, so whenever that is. But, no um, way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so what... I'll, first I'll line up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm Michael. I'm 21 years old, and I love to snowboard, love to climb, be in the mountains, and I've been lucky enough, blessed enough to kind of make it into a career. So, um, currently competing for free ride snowboarding on the Free Ride World Tour, and uh, that's what I'll be pretty much doing all, all season, traveling around, um, hopefully, fingers crossed with COVID. Yeah, I'm... I'm Glad that that's even on the horizon as a possibility. I was wondering right. about that. Yeah, yeah. So currently it is, and we'll see. Things are changing every day, but no matter what, we'll be snowboarding this season somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, so I was actually born on the East Coast and lived there until I was about 12, and then I moved out to Colorado, which I can't say was the best decision in my life because it wasn't my decision, it was my parents. <laughs> but it honestly is one of the greatest things. Just to move out west, as you guys know, it just living out here opens up so many possibilities to do fun, fun things. And um, so I grew up in Colorado until you know I graduated high school, and then I moved to Montana for college. Still going to college there, in my third year. And yeah, honestly, I feel like I probably won't leave there for a while. I love it up there. So, heck yeah, yeah. that's super cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So how young were you when you moved out to Colorado? I was, 12. Oh, yeah, 12, sorry. <laughs> just 12, pretty much turning 13, but yeah, yeah, right around there. So that's like the prime time too. Cause like you're still oh, yeah. young enough to where like friends are pretty easy to make versus I feel like when you're like 16, 17, like it's just like a weirder time. Yeah, definitely. Like you were probably like just, just old enough to where like you could get into some fun stuff versus when you're like really little, you kind of have to have your parents like make your friends for you because they're the ones driving. Definitely. That's when I went through my BMX phase. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the the yeah. six months to one year that I tried that. But uh, yeah, it was good. You know, before before high school um, to move somewhere instead of middle of high school or, or exactly. after. Um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a good transition. That's when I started competing in snowboarding was when I moved out here. I had actually never even seen a mountain with above tree line, you know, alpine mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and so I came out and I saw Breck. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the craziest place ever. It was peak eight, you know, inbounds at Breck, <laughs> which is incredible. But uh, yeah, now to, I eventually moved there and yeah, just so blessed. It's awesome. But, That's fantastic. And then, yeah. so you got into like the big mountain and backcountry, like free ride stuff. How did, is that what you competed in right away or what? So I actually competed in half pipe all the way through high school. Okay. Uh, well, most of the way through high school. So. Gosh, I can walk. I can kind of go back all the way to that if you guys want. Why yeah. not? Yeah. yeah. Take yeah. us that's, down memory lane. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. So when I moved out here to, to Colorado, started competing, really f fell in love with half pipe. So actually after my first year of high school, I was in a brick and mortar school and then switched to online classes so that I could train six, seven days a week for half pipe. So I moved Whoa. up to Breckenridge. Yeah. Yeah, I got the opportunity for my coach and, um, you know, everybody else in my family has always just done the traditional path. So it was kind of out there, but my parents are super supportive. So they, they were like, go for it. And I moved up to Breck, did online classes and trained six plus days a week for half pipe. And yeah, it was really fun. I traveled for that as well. Um, all over the States and then international as well. Lived with the host family down in New Zealand for a little bit competing down there and, um, when I was a junior in high school, my coach at the time here in Colorado, he was like, I'm moving to Oregon to be the head coach of a snowboard Academy there. I want you to come with me. And so I did. And so, what? yeah, uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. I left Oregon, like left my family, you know, at 16 years old, which 17. you'd kind of already left them if you were living with yeah. Someone in Breck, I'm guessing. Right. Like, so I doubt you had your own place. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was living up there and, and my my mom and dad. So my dad 
dad works half the time in Breck and half the time in, in like the Denver area. So okay. my mom and dad would try to like be up there with me for at least half the week and then come back. So I was able to see them quite a bit, but yeah, junior year moved up there. That's when I did a lot more traveling down in New Zealand and everything, living at that school. And then at the end of my junior year, I had a traumatic brain injury in the half pipe. And so then the doctors told me no more half pipe, <laughs> oh, <laughs> literally man. said that yeah. no more half pipe, which I was at that point completely okay with. Cause my brain was rocked. Jeez. And, and this probably would, would have been like right after, or right before Kevin Pierce. That would be after I believe. Um, I really should know more about, you know, his story, but yeah, so that was, um, pretty big transition point for my life. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. Like, dude, those half pipes are hands down the scariest thing on the mountain. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. Yeah. It's I've been literally just a 25 foot wall of ice. I've been snowboarding for probably 17 or 18 years and I st- can still barely get out of the, uh, the coping or whatever you'd want to call it. Oh my it. gosh. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. that is 22 feet of, of wall. I was standing on kind of like a balcony at my house and this was about a week ago. And I was standing on it, the second story. Mm-hmm. And I was asking my dad, like, how high, you know, we're at. And he's like, well, the whole thing's probably about 20 feet. And I was like, okay, so the half pipe that I would ride is taller than this before you air out of it. Oh, You're yeah. airing, like, in total 30, well, some people weigh more than me, but I was going, like, 30 feet, you know, air plus wall. Yeah. Yeah, so that, you it's, know. <laughs> it's so burly. It's up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite things to watch just because – as someone who's taken a lot of aggressive falls in his <laughs> life, watching people just like stare at that crazy half pipe right down the barrel and just like, well, we're sending it anyways. Well, and the crazy thing is it's either like silly falls where you like loop out and you kind of just slide on your butt in the flat yeah. bottom or devastating brain injuries or oh my gosh, death. Yeah. yeah if, or like for knuckle some. case and like, oh, Yeah. And I saw a ton of those falls. I mean, oh, honestly, sure. every time you're at the top, you're scared. <laughs> or I was, yeah. at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't talk for everybody, but I, I, I'd be at the top and just like, gosh, what am I doing? And I'm like, I love doing this so much. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah. drop in. But yeah, it, uh, it, it, was, it was a great learning opportunity. I would not change a thing for what I did through high school. Um, grew a ton as an athlete, as a person, all of that. And then, yeah, when the head injury happened, they said no more half pipe. Uh, I took obviously quite a bit of time off. Just I couldn't even draw a clock. I didn't know like what order the numbers went in. I had to just get everything back. So it was like kind of starting from square one. I mean, in some ways, in some ways. Yeah, it wasn't nearly as bad as what some people deal with. Um, But it was bad enough that I I didn't want to do it again. And um, yeah, again, my family's so supportive. I was, I was thankful to have them there. My dad, works at the hospital that I was in. So he was able to keep coming and checking on me. Um, but yeah, that's actually what my Ted talk was going to be on was mm, my brain okay. injury and moving forward. But yeah, eventually I was able to snowboard again. It's going to be on. It is going yeah. to be on. Yeah. yeah. So that'll happen at some point, but I was, I was happy to be able to snowboard at all. Honestly, after that, that but, is actually cool of them to like, not even put it in your mind, like no snowboarding. Cause then you'd probably want to defy their orders. Yeah. The yeah. Orders, yeah. 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 And to be honest, it was all blurry. Just that it's the first three months, I think after that, but mm-hmm. I think that, I don't know what they wanted me to do. <laughs> what I <laughs> heard was no more. Half-pipe. <laughs> what I heard was no more half pipe and I'll stick with that. I, I think though the talk was just be careful with whatever you do. And, and yeah. I, I do, you know, to an extent, um, but yeah, I was able to snowboard, and then I found free ride, which honestly, it was a blessing in disguise because that's just so much more fun for me. And, and now I'm able to compete in that, which people laugh at. You know, like, how is that any safer? But, you know, in half pipe, you're always going full throttle, like you were saying. Just yeah. everybody's boosting. You always have to be doing um, the 100%. It's, it's just not even worth competing unless you're going to send it with every ounce. Like, there's no just like oh, I'm just going to try and go like high and smooth and like only focus on like the actual technique of just Mm -hmm. doing a perfect one wall. It's 
like you can't there's no the same art in that sense right you're right if you're not doing a fast. double cork you're not even probably getting invited to like the real contests i would imagine yeah pretty much so there's that and then in free ride you know you get judged on well i guess i don't know how familiar you guys I are with free ride i actually don't know anything <laughs> to me i <laughs> i don't I'm know anything about like, the, the contest aspect of it okay so free ride a contest basically there's a gate at the top of a backcountry face of a mountain and a gate at the bottom and you can go wherever you want as long as you start in the start gate and finish in the bottom and so you're judged by first and foremost your line and so that's the route you pick down the mountain that includes you know bigger cliffs or more yeah narrow shoots more exposed terrain that all goes into your line score and mm-hmm. then from there you have fluidity and control technique style and energy all of that so you know if i'm in a, if if I'm in a situation where I'm like, maybe going off the big cliffs, just the biggest cliffs right now would not be good for my head. I can tone it down on that a bit and then excel in the other categories and still score well, still show my style. So there is an art to it that makes it a bit safer. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. It just gives you options other than I have to hit full throttle. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. That's that's such a a cool experience to have found. Well, it. it's yeah. pretty full throttle. I would oh, say I'm going sure. down <laughs> a pretty large mountain. And I was Yeah, you can, yeah, that's, if you want, you can go as full throttle as you've ever yeah. gone. And I did that last year a few times. You guys know with any extreme sport, oh. just pushing that sport to the limit is the greatest feeling. There's no better feeling than seeing where you're comfortable and then accidentally going significantly <laughs> farther than you meant to past it. Yes. And as you look back at your comfort zone being like, it's working. Oh, God. <laughs> and then you just keep inching higher with yeah. that. Yeah. So that's, that's the cool part. And uh, in a way, everybody kind of knows that feeling from their individual sports, whatever it may be. Yeah. I feel like. I mean, we hope so. That's kind of what we want to do with the Joy Quota is yeah. inspire people to push past that comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. And whatever it is, it could be mm-hmm. it could be snowboarding, it could be you guys rally cars all over the place Dude, like it that. Could be competitive <laughs> cup stacking. It could be, man. And like, oh, Get the dude, rush. I just did it well on top of the Eiffel Tower or something crazy. Like, there's always. I want to see that yeah. actually. Somebody. Yeah, somebody watching the Joy Quota right now. <laughs> That'd be great. Send it to me when you do it. <laughs> Yeah, or like all those weird like dudes in Russia who are on the sides of buildings and they like cup stack on the edge of a building or something. Yeah, yeah there's always a way to push whatever it is that you're doing, even yeah. if it's something that someone else might find mundane. Absolutely, yeah. And so, so that's what I'm doing, and uh, it's cool because now, so now I'm on the world tour. I'm also full time student. Uh, I am taking this winter off, but um, balancing studies and i have a business too so balancing kind of work and studies with this career it's interesting to say the least but it's fun yeah so how did it come about to be on the world tour describe that a little bit more yeah so it, there's the world tour and every year there's about nine men snowboarders on it and there's also women snowboard men and women ski categories as well but for men snowboard there's about nine people and then there's the world qualifier, which is a step down from that. And so you compete on the world qualifier and you gain points from the competitions. And the person with the most points at the end of the year, they take one person from each hemisphere. So one from, you know, North America and all that. And then one from, mm-hmm. from Europe. And so I just compete on the world qualifiers for two years in the adult circuit and the first year, my like, my my roommate from from high school in Oregon, uh, that what? boarding school what? I went to, yeah. So the guy that I competed with in half pipe, and we both switched to free ride. He got the spot the first year, which was so cool. Um, Blake Moeller, and then I got last year, just won through the points I accumulated throughout the year, and got the one spot for over here. So, wow. so you're one of nine yeah. male snowboarders on the the world tour. So like. This is the highest stage. Like, there's no higher free ride stage. This is the highest it goes. That's so. pretty epic, man. Yeah, that's yeah. so really sick. sick. Yeah, dream yeah. come true to say the least. But that is rad. Yeah. And so, is your roommate still on the tour? He is. Yeah. What? So last year he actually had an injury, so they let him roll over to this year. And so, I mean, we're just—it's so cool. We get to kind of do this together, but um. That's so yeah. rad. Yeah. Like not only the, what are the odds that like you, 
were able to make it, but that like also he was, and you guys know each other. Yeah. I'm sure your your old coach is just like through the moon, like yeah, yes, <laughs> it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Just I've seriously been through the whole whole the whole process was with him. Um, he was there. I think he was the first person to be to me when I had my head injury. He kind of stuck a glove under my neck because I could. I also had some neck problems from that injury, and. <laughs> That glove stayed with me the whole time through all the x-rays. They just couldn't find it until the x-rays came back and it was like lodged under some clothing clothing I was wearing. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, so he's been there the whole time. It's really cool. Um, He crushes it just an insane snowboarder. So I'm excited for him and for others to see him. So what's his name and what's the name of his school? So he's Blake Moeller. Uh, No, that's your coach? Oh, no, that's 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 my friend competing with me. Okay. Yeah. I was like, Uh, yeah, Blake was the other... I mean, the coach has to be so psyched that like, oh yeah, two of his oh absolutely students are essentially two of the top nine. That's insane. That's almost- yeah. So our coach was Tommy Bennett for half pipe, and that's who we went to Oregon with. And then we both switched to free ride, and Brennan Metzler has been. So those two, yeah. those two guys have been. I mean, just so influential for me. I spent so much time with them, Brennan. Brennan's been coaching us through the free ride though. So cool. Heck yeah. Yes. So oh, Blake, did you and Blake both kind of at the same time switch or was it one than the other? Honestly, I think we just both switched at the same time. I think he did a bit of half pipe and slope style for a bit longer while doing both kind of balancing it. And then he kind See of went full free liked. ride, but yeah. he just kind of does it all as well. So, I mean, like most of us, we all, I mean, I love to go in the half pipe still, but I just kind of got to tone myself back from it. But yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's so what? cool, man. To be there with like a buddy. Yeah. It's so rad. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a good experience. And the other guys I'm going with are people I've always looked up to. I watched them in movies when I was a kid and they inspired me to do free ride. And then I get to ride with them this year. So I'm really excited to say the least. That but. is wild. So when is your first contest? First one is in mid-February. So the okay. first two were canceled. Um, that was going to be in Japan and Canada. And now we're going over to Andorra and that's in mid February wow. for the first one. Yeah. Where I'm not familiar with Andorra. I don't write me neither until the free after. Yeah. Andorra is a small country between, I think it's around like France, Spain. Oh, wow. That I area. thought I, it was a place in yeah, Spain. Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. it was a country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Spain. Didn't realize it was a country. Yeah. Wow. And go fact check me on it, but <laughs> no, it is. It is. So honestly, it's it's really small. Um, I was looking for flights yeah. out of that country, and I just don't think that's a thing. I think you kind of have to fly into someplace else. Yeah. Well, they, they have like a small airport, so they go, oh, I'll fly out of there. But yeah. you have to do a bunch of connecting flights. <laughs> so do you have sponsors helping you with this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So I have a few. Actually, what I'm wearing right now world boards is like the board shop in town that i've just the guys there jay who owns the shop just kind of took me under his wing a, a bit ago and it's like a family so that's um great to be a part of um also four points bar they're out of denver like energy bar company oh, so nice. yes yeah, so they're great montucky do you guys know montucky it sounds like uh, the beer yeah, yeah yeah the beer they're yeah. out of bozeman so i ride for montucky Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Which is super fun. And then Sun God Eyewear, they're out of Verbier in, in Switzerland. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I just, just signed on with them, so I'm really excited for that. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, they're actually the official eyewear sponsor of the World Tour as well, so just super free ride based brand, which is really cool. Um, That's yeah. so rad. Yeah, so thankful for their help for sure. Um, so w- what are the – which stops are left? Like what places – for contests. Yeah, so it's just super condensed this year because of COVID, but we're basically doing the Andorra stop, and then from there we go to Fieberbrunn in Austria, and then from there we go to Switzerland. And so, so just three stops this year? Yeah, just three this wow. year. Yeah, and uh, so the way it usually works is it's usually five stops, and after the fourth stop, they make a cut, and only the top six people go on. And, and if you are in that cut, you make it to the final stop and requalify for the next year. And then that's how, you know, that works. And so the final stop, man, that is Verbier in Switzerland. And that is just, it's on the Beck, the Ross and that face. I've just always wanted to ride. Like I, if I got, you know, 
the opportunity to ride on that face. I know exactly what line I do. I know what that's cliffs so I'd hit. Cool. I've been dreaming of it. So hmm. that's the dream. I think, you know, the, the format's switching all up this year um, mm-hmm. as far as if there's, you know, when the cut is and everything like that. But yeah. Yeah. So you got to be on it pretty much. <laughs> you got to be on if, it if every time. Wanna, like, keep the dream alive. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Really um, yeah. It's pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, I visualize it every day. I know what I want to do at the other so stops. You just have too. like a poster of that face in your room. <laughs> pretty much, man. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. So the guys I live with, I live with two of my closest friends. Um, one of them actually competes with me. Um, he's in the qualifier circuit still, but Warren and then my other friend, Ben and everybody free rides up in Montana. And we're just always watching the world tour, always dreaming of what we're going to do and, and training together and riding. And we talk about the back all the time. We just have maps of, that's, you know, lines and whatnot, but that's so rad. Yeah. So what was that uh, snowboarding game that came out like three years ago? That was so good. Oh, I, no. I know what you're talking about. And you could yeah. like do the like skiing with the parachute. You mm-hmm. could snowboard. You could wingsuit. It was like the coolest game. But they had actual mountains that they'd like studied the topography so you could do like your actual dream run on the dream mountain. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, I would have no idea what the Beck was. But our roommate uh, grew up in Granby. Uh, Sam and he was on the couch with a broken femur, and so we bought that. And all we did was just play that while he recouped. Dang! Did it have the back in it? Yeah, no, it had like oh. real mountains, and you could hit actual. See, that's crazy. Real yeah, stuff. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, so I'm excited to say the least. But yeah, yeah. it's way cool. I'm like, part of me sometimes wishes that I did more snowboarding and like took it a little more seriously. Cause like, I would have loved to been like doing that kind of thing. Like that's my style. I, I haven't done much of it, but I could never like do tricks. Like terrain park stuff was never mm. my thing, but just like cruising. Yeah. Like, I feel like everybody can kind of connect with free ride a little more than yeah. a half pipe say. Mm-hmm. Cause you can go out and you know, even there's just a little bump under the chairlift. Like, I'm going to drop that little stump or rock, you yeah. know, even it's, it's three feet or something, but everybody can go try that. Not everybody can hop in a half pipe. So it's, uh, it, people yeah. don't really know about it, but everybody that watches it just gets hooked on free ride. Cause it's, it's awesome. It's something you can connect with. Yeah. Where, where can we watch it? We're go- I like, yeah, I'm for sure going to watch you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they stream it on the freeridewordtour.com. Okay. So you just look up Freeride World Tour. They give countdowns to events and live stream it and everything like that. Um, you know, they put it afterwards on like Red Bull TV and stuff like that. But if you want to watch the event yeah. right right there, um, freeridewordtour.com. Yeah, we're going to... Yeah, because it's, it's just winter rampage. Is all like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, as soon as I heard freeride, like that's what I was picturing, which it sounds like it's pretty similar. It's, it's so, like, Yeah, it's so similar. And... A top gate, I guess the difference is those guys have to like build a line in some sense. But mm. so that's, a, I guess, do you get to like pack in an obstacle or something? Or is it just like Happy Madison or Happy Gilmore rules like play as lies? <laughs> it's crazy. So no, you, I guess long story short, no. But you actually don't get to ride the face before you compete on it. So what you do is you... You you get one run, one opportunity. One to opportunity. See to see one. What? <laughs> I was so thinking you get at least two or three. But you get no, one man, you are, opportunity. Yeah, you're so you're full on. So what you do is you have inspection day days, maybe even before it, where you use binoculars from across the mm-hmm. face from another face, and you you look at the mountain with binoculars, and you're like, okay. I'm going to do this line. This line sticks out to me. I think this cliff is 20 feet <laughs> and it's up below this bush, right? Or this tree. Yeah. And you, you make visuals. And so for me, it's often like trees, like this clump of trees, like no to go left here and whatever. It oh may be. my yeah. God, dude. What? And then you visualize like a thousand times, like kid you not, maybe even a thousand times. And then you get there and you ride it without ever riding it before and and you know this often on the same faces so the guys who have been on the tour have ridden that you know face before it's always different yeah. but as a rookie i've done it a million times in my mind but i've never been there 
And so you get there and it looks obviously way different from the top. You can't see anything. And well, yeah, all your markings you're seeing oh. the back half of. Yeah, yeah. And you can't see anything between you and the bottom because it's just so steep, right? So yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that's so much more burly than I even <laughs> thought it was. Like I knew that it was burly, but that is so crazy. You ride up on cliffs and you're like, okay, I think this is 15 feet. Maybe it's like 30, you know, but you're committed. You get that fluidity score. Yeah. So you're just like, I'm going. Pros are it's great snow usually because nobody's been on it. Yeah. You know, and you like, I don't know, maybe you get helicoptered up there and nobody's been on this face. So it's untouched, incredible runs, but. Yeah, it's uh that is so so like <laughs> committing. In the past have you accidentally like run up on a slope like on a cuz I'm assuming that's how the whole tour works, right? It's not just this last set. So on the qualifier circuit in Europe that's the way it is. In America or in the Americas, you know, North America it's it's not actually. You get to go on the thing. You don't get to hit your cliffs, but you get to look at, at least them. See what it is. Yeah, and so it's going to be way different for me. I've never done this before um, in this way. Obviously, I've gone out and practiced kind of, but... And will you have... Is your coach there kind of helping you spot these lines? Not anymore. So he was okay. through the qualifiers. Now it'll just, you know, be me. Because um, I feel like that's a, a skill that you would want somebody with experience to help you point out, like... That cliff looks 20 feet, but what if it's 60 yeah. and you right. hit it a little bit faster and you're going like 80 to the sweet spot or something? Yeah. Like, and, you know, there's ways to work around that. Um, I'm sure the uh, g other guys on the tour that have been there for a while are willing to give some pointers. Yeah, no one wants but... to see anybody get hurt. So. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I'll get some pointers. But honestly, I've had a lot of practice eyeballing things and I'm always looking at cliffs and, mm. and I'll try to gauge, you know, I think this is 15 feet and then I'll roll up to it and check it out and maybe it is maybe it's not and I'm like okay i need to so you have you actually been practicing like just hitting stuff without ever looking at it yeah i have been not I'm as sure much that as that's i should a have weird been skill <laughs> yeah that, to to just like override your base instinct to like save yourself oh absolutely yeah i was with a friend the other day and there was this really sketchy hit and you know there's always that one friend in the group that does the sketchy hits and then yeah. everybody has to follow um so yeah, my friend went and he hit it and I roll up on it and I'm like, you know, does this go? And I was like, you know, I should just really get used to this. So I just backed up and like spun off it instead of just airing it. Cause I was like, I really should yeah. get used to this <laughs> <laughs> and nobody even saw it. So I was like, whatever, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm trying to practice that. Um, yeah. Cause you just have to hit it full speed. Yeah. Like, so I guess here's. Do you get to like stop in the middle of your run? Well, no, because that's the fluidity that right? he's talking so about. Like, right, no score. stopping. So if you if you like run up on a cliff, let's say, and it's like you know forty feet bigger than you thought, and you do end <laughs> up stopping, is that just the end of your run? Is there any? I mean, it really will be docked a ton. And in, in reality, if if you're that far off, you've really got some other problems. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Yeah. But you know, um, and that's the thing too. So a lot of people watch free riding, like you know, oh. I, I could probably maybe go do some of that um, or that didn't look too big or anything, but that's kind of part of it is you haven't seen it. So on TV, it doesn't look too big, but it's really like a 20 foot cliff and you've never seen. So you try to maybe go down a little bit. Like I try to say, okay, I think this is 20, but let's pretend it's 25. Would I still hit it? You know? Yeah. Like so add the extra 10%. Right. 20%. Cause it probably is bigger than I think. So yeah. I'll just go down a little bit and you can always try to take it bigger if you get there and it's all on your toes. You know, you gotta, oh, that's yeah. so <laughs> sick that you don't get to see it before you ride it. Yeah. That to me is like such pure sport. Yeah. Like it's kind of in the same way that surfing, like you really don't know what you're surfing until you're on the wave. Like totally. Yeah. You, you can eyeball it and there's all these reasons that you could think the wave is going to be exactly this or that. But ultimately until you're actually on it, you don't know what the wave's going to be different. like. And that's such a cool concept in general for a sport. Like most sports are so hyper controlled that the actual terrain or like environment being one of the variables is so rad. Yeah. And that's why, you know, they aren't going to put this in the Olympics. Probably it's just not cookie cutter. Same thing every time. So mm -hmm. It's a little tougher to get. Well, but surfing made it. So yeah. 
you know, and, and it's whether or not, uh, it's also controversy, like, do we want it in the Olympics? But uh, who knows? So, Dylan, you surf. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I got to know you is surfing right. in, in the rivers all the time. Do you surf in the ocean too? or I poorly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always have loved it, uh, but growing up in Colorado, there's no, yeah. not much opportunity until they built this river thing. I lived in Huntington for three years and was able to go most days that there were waves, Mm -hmm. but I would still consider myself very beginner at that. And then coming back here, you lose everything. I I mean, I, when I was traveling, I went to Bali and just got pounded because no arm strength and river surfing doesn't necessarily translate to (laughs) real surfing. They're pretty much, they share a name, but that's (laughs) about it. Different motion, (laughs) different board. Yeah. Do you surf Gavin? I, I've only tried once in the ocean. It was just the one time I had the opportunity. I think I stood up once and then, uh, I stood up for like all of two seconds, not even like really half a second river surfing. Yeah. I think that was two summers ago. I don't think you went this summer. Did you? Yeah, no, because I wouldn't have done this. Uh, I don't think so. Because so. yeah. this, se- this, this season, season was so quick. Yeah. It, it was, was like, quick. It was definitely it was in now. a couple was days like here late. and there. It was like almost yeah. cold outside. <laughs> like, no, it was for my birthday. Well, and then I went a couple more Last times year. with you as well. Oh, okay. But um, I do love it. Yeah. I'd like to do it more. I'm I'm finding more and more that I'm a very lazy <laughs> individual. Like, if the amount of... It really has to be like, wow, spectacular for me to be like... I could just be riding my, my my bike, do the thing that I already like, that I'm already good at, that I already have a bunch of friends there. It's like one of my favorite things already. Or I could go suck at something for like two, three hours. But you live in the premier surf destination. I mean, I know, exactly. <laughs> so I think uh, the river surfing, I, I'd like to get more into it. I wanted to this year because my office is actually literally like – five minutes from the spot over in flat park oh no way like literally right there I'm, I right there in the uh like the sheridan Englewood area or something like that because i work basically right at ruby hill and oh so it's like okay. not far at all for me to mm-hmm. make it to the surf spot and i was like that would be sick if i could start taking it's so like fun trips over yeah. there when the it's empty and you can just like lap it mm-hmm. um so hopefully this upcoming summer i'll be able to go more no, yeah I'm, big time Sur- surfing inspires my snowboarding a ton. I love surfing. I'm, I'd say yeah. I'm still very beginner, but yeah, it's uh, I was actually s- snowboarding today, and somebody was like, "Yeah, you surf, right?" And I was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> you have no idea, but that was a huge compliment. Thank you. I was like, "Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll call it that. I, I can surf, yeah." But no, the river surfing's fun, and it's always fun to see everybody out there trying to learn too and getting into it. And then you know, the next week, you know, you see them on their first time, and two weeks later they're still there and they're just crushing it now and they're just mm-hmm. so into it and it's a cool community we have here for sure yeah it's it's really unique and it's a it's cool that they are expanding it so much i think like fort collins was building a place uh oh really eagle eagle built a place or Edward eagle's or wave is incredible really yeah oh my gosh yeah i missed it i missed out on that yeah, it had a really short season this year. So I was a raft guide f- for summer, like two summers ago. Lived out of my truck in Vail, which is hilarious to mm-hmm. be, you know, car camping in mm-hmm. the richest <laughs> place. But uh, we were all doing that. We just camped out because we were always at a new boathouse each day. And so I was living right near the Eagle Wave. Mm-hmm. And that was an incredible year. I actually got really spoiled. I thought it was going to be like that every year, but apparently it never stays in like that for that long. But yeah, I would raft through with with customers, you know, and see my friends. They would have to move out of the way for me because I'd be coming through yeah. literally on the surf wave. And then after I finished the trip, I'd just circle up and surf with them, and it was so fun. Oh, yeah, I, I would really like to go there. Yeah, you should you should get there. I tried sure, Glenwood, and I missed Glenwood this year too. Uh, two years ago, I tried Glenwood one day. It's a mission. It's like three and a half hour, four hour drive, mm. and then I can't. I don't right even back have to the, my laziness. I'm like, well, no. Yeah, and then I don't even have the strength to surf for three whole hours. So then yeah. I'm like driving twi- more than twice as long as I'm. Yeah, you gotta surfing. camp. 
I got worked at Glenwood the one time I tried to go. I think I paddled into that wave because you have to paddle from above or whatever, like, I say like seven times or something like that. And on the last one, my leash broke and I had to go just swim downriver to try to get my board, which I should have just let go. But I started, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of drifting around the yeah, corner out of town. And I, I eventually I had to put the leash in my mouth and then start swimming because and. I just couldn't breathe, keep my head oh up, my and I gosh. freaked out. I got there, and I was like, I just can't do this again. Oh. Oh, was, yeah. I've heard Glenwood's I, wave is burly. Yeah, well, I'll be back, but <laughs> for now. I, you know, com, uh, don't maybe do things exactly the right way, and some might call <laughs> me an idiot uh, occasionally. So I had, I did have a helmet, but I didn't have a vest or a leash because you don't do – my only other experience uh, is is Platte Park, which is, is basically a swimming pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot and dog. then so uh, it's River Run Park is like maximum like ideally it's like a thousand cfs cubic feet per second of water, where Glenwood was like thirty thousand, so it's uh, thirty times more water, and it yeah. turns out you should have a life jacket and a leash, <laughs> and yeah. I did the. Well, so I did the same thing where like I get away from my board and I am just like drowning essentially. Oh. And <laughs> really and though, seriously, yeah. Don't have my board, like finally <laughs> like get pushed half a mile down river, finally get out, and then then my board goes by and I'm like, Well, I need my board. Oh, <laughs> I no. can't let that go down. And so then I have to like exhausted, barely breathing, have to swim out and get on my board and then get carried another quarter mile down the river. And, oh my gosh. But I, next thing you I know, learned. you're in Utah yeah, exactly. <laughs> floating. Yeah. yeah, no, I've had some sketchy times river surfing. I probably surf on an ideal year, like 30 plus days of summer. Honestly, wow. it has to be more than that. Cause I go almost every day when I'm in town, but, um, uh, I started before I knew it was a thing on the, in, on, in golden, I was floating down, you know, in tubes and yeah. then I got just stuck in one of those and I was like freaking out, right? Cause I couldn't go anywhere. I was just being held in that wave. And I was like, well, if I can't get out, I might as well bring a board and not be able to get out on a board. We should mm-hmm. try to surf it. And my neighbor lent me his and we tried it and we stood up and then we found out it was the thing that river run was built. And That's hilarious that you accidentally discovered river surfing. That's yeah. Incredible. We were just trying to do it and, um, it was fun, you know, with, the bottom wave right below I think there's wa- the main street yeah, yeah. golden yeah if I your know board breaks there so well yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah i've you been b- up and down that hundreds of times yeah so that wave's really fun i mean yeah. at certain flows but if your board breaks and you don't have a leash that thing is going towards cores and it's about to be turned into a, a cores light you know for so, sure yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've, I've had to swim after a board a few times once i was running down main street in my wetsuit you know skin tight just super weird wetsuit yeah everybody's looking at me <laughs> uh, don't mind me I guys gotta get i gotta my get my board get <laughs> <laughs> yeah good good times though so do you pretty much just surf that bottom one just because otherwise, like, you're in everyone's way as they're tubing? Kind of. Well, the first one we tried to surf was just in the middle of all yeah. of that. Um, I surfed there a little bit. Honestly, now I go to River Run, Eagle. Well, yeah, now we waves. have actual yeah, parks, we have good so there's, stuff. Like, no reason to go there, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, it was good. And, yeah, I used to tie it all back because I did some ocean surfing, too, and that influences my my snowboarding. I try to get the slashes and just picture a bottom turn That's on a I'm face. Fishing, yeah. And, yeah, it's... It's pretty similar, honestly, in a lot of ways. I'm sure in like really deep powder, I've like I've never. I think I've ridden powder once in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't like deep. It was only like maybe a foot, and I was just like, "This is incredible! I get why people like this." There were that time at Loveland was yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I literally just like never experienced it. I was like, I can't even see my board. Like this is hilarious. It's fun. Yeah. Have you, Dylan? Have you? S- Snow surf some pal. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, my best day was a, a trip to Wolf Creek. Where oh. there, it it was like four feet over the weekend or something total. Yeah. So yeah, it sounds like Wolf Creek. It, yeah. It, the problem is they get the most snow, but they're like the least set up <laughs> for it. Like it's so it's such a mellow mountain, and then it's like it's like down flat, down flat, and so you're just like walking. Gotcha. Out of everywhere. Yeah. Okay. It's so sense. funny because my dad, that's where his best day of all time was. Similar story. 
last truck over the fucking mountain pass was my mm-hmm. dad. And then they closed it behind him. And even then, they made him put chains on his F-350. Oh, my and gosh. And he's like, oh, I actually have chains, so bite it. <laughs> like, I'm a good... I'm going. And uh, he went, and they got up to the top, and, you know, they cat to the top of the mountain or whatever. And literally, all the instructors the whole way up are just like, hey, guys, we're your guides. Like, listen to us. We can't have anybody, like, disappearing on us. Stay as a pack, blah, 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 blah. And then they get to the top of the mountain, hop out of the cat, like first time actually seeing how much snow was dumped. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll see you guys at the bottom. Peace. And they just <laughs> all the guides disappeared without everyone. They're like, no, this is too good. And just took off. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that cat run is really fun, but it's it's very short. Like it's it's like not definitely not even a thousand feet of like down. And then you're just like. Surf paddling your way mm-hmm. out of it oh. for a while. That uh, doesn't sound quite as fun. No. It's, it's like, I mean, it's worth it, but it, yeah, it's not ideal. I'm hoping to, my brother and I have been trying to get to Silverton for years, and I, like, this was going to be finally our year, and then mm. I don't even know. If, well, if you get a reservation, you can stay at Party Dave's house. He'd be, he'd probably go join you, honestly. Party He's, Dave. I need to meet Party Dave. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Party Dave is my dad. He's the greatest. No way. Yeah, Party Dave. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, he was actually a ski instructor a couple of years ago at Purgatory. He's like 60 <laughs> cool. something. Wow. Like, um, but uh, no, he would. He'd probably go with you because he he's a really good skier. He skied his whole life, and like now none of his friends will go skiing with him because they're all like close to seventy. Mm. And they're, they're all like, oh, I'm old and brittle. <laughs> and my dad's like, I'd still like at least one or two good ski days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. That'd be hilarious. That would be fun. Yeah. Purgatory is probably where it was where my best day was, even though it's a terrible mountain in terms of like what someone would consider an awesome mountain. Yeah. Uh, it was just like the perfect day out. But then we went to Loveland two years ago, last year, something like that. With our buddy Zach, who rides for Never Summer, and he was a pro snowboarder back in the day, and like, just had a ball. Oh, that yeah, that. they had a ball. I, yeah, <laughs> I ruined my back. What did I do? I think I bent over. Like yeah. first, you were like first run of the boot. day. No, to like strap in, and I bent over and threw out my back, and <sighs> just literally at the top gone. of the lift, haven't hit anything. Yeah, for, <laughs> no. and the, it was supposed to be Adventure Day where we were gonna start it we because it was his birthday so we yeah. were starting snowboarding and then we brought the snow bike we were going we were going to do some snow biking and sledding and then uh end the day riding bikes at at ruby and i couldn't do any of it because first second of the day yeah <laughs> it destroyed my back oh i yeah I mean, up in Montana, some of the terrain, man. I mean, we still we're still like naming runs. What? In ba- like, they're not named on the map. I'm sure. I mean, everybody Someone's hits them and it, stuff, yeah. but they just don't have names. So we just kind of name them and call it that within our little friend group, you know. But yeah, there's some crazy stuff. I mean, Bridger opens, you know, on a good on a good normal year, they're kind of just like, all right, well, it's open, and we're not gonna really mark it off, but just use your judgment. Don't go there if it's not good. And you're like, all right, well. We'll open up this zone for the season. <laughs> and wow. Yeah, it's wow. it's pretty fun. So, just some some stuff. I'm just, how how is this inbounds? You know, like it's good thing they just have people hairy. sign a waiver. There's a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's wild. So, did you drive? Do you drive back and forth? Uh sometimes fly. Sometimes uh, okay. this this time I drove back because a friend was driving already, and I just hopped in her car. Because um, that's probably I, what eighteen hours. Yeah, no, it's only about ten. Oh, that's not yeah. Bad. It's not too bad. I actually almost flew back tonight after this. What? <laughs> um, I got called in to do like an ad at Big Sky, so I ride for Big Sky yeah. and I do advertisements with them. And they called me. I was like, "Well, don't know if I can get a flight because nobody goes." I mean, Bozeman Airport's small. And I feel like most flights are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> and <laughs> like, there's no way I'm catching a flight late tonight. It, oh, tonight's Thursday though. That's why there were yeah. some flights. So, but yeah, so I almost flew back. That that drive though is is just long enough that you're like, oh, okay, I'm I'm getting a little tired, especially if you make a wrong turn and go to South Dude. Dakota. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too yeah. soon. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. For those of you who aren't in on the joke, while we were making drinks upstairs, 
Uh, I told the story of when I was supposed to be in Montana and ended up in the Black Hills. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's all funny. Yeah. Ago. Anytime you accidentally end up in South Dakota, it's a sensitive topic. Oh, dude. It was, it was, it was like eight hours of my life. I'll never get back. It was so long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nice in the sense that you hit cruise and you go. Um, I couldn't hit cruise at all on the way back this last time, though, because there was so much ice. So I was just oh. really cautious, but... Yeah, it's it's not too bad. So, not do bad. you stay out there during the summer as well? I haven't in the past, just because I've been working down here. Um, and with COVID this year, I'm not really sure what I'll be doing. If the tour happens, um, if I requalify for next year, I'll probably go try to live in New Zealand for the year just to train. Or yeah, for the summer, be sorry. Great right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously it's summer there right now, but right. In terms but in the in COVID, the, our summer, yeah. it's uh, it's good down there. So either that or um, probably live up there this summer. Otherwise, do some work in. But yeah. So you mentioned you have a business. Is that that what you're working on, or can you tell y- us about that? Yeah, yeah. So I it's called Posted Software, and basically we make an app on which universities post on campus jobs, and then students can sign up for the jobs through that app. So it focuses on one-time episodic jobs that come up out of nowhere and facilitates the part-time student employment process. So streamlines the paperwork process, automatic campus-wide notifications, all that stuff. Um, so it just kind of like e-blasts everybody who's like, this is their criteria for what they're looking for exactly. for a quick gig. Yeah. Hmm. And then whoever dibs is it first gets it. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, when I moved, like right away when I moved to MSU and was living on campus, I heard... A ton of people wanted to earn some quick cash between class, but they didn't have enough time to commit to part-time or full-time job because they were also taking classes. And at the same time, I heard about these jobs on campus that they just couldn't get the word out because they were trying to use like wow. normal yeah, email. Pigeons and yeah, like, outdated yeah stuff. smoke signals yeah. from the bo- yeah, Bobcat <laughs> Stadium, whatever they do. So it, it, I was like, okay, well, there's these two needs. I can, I can solve this. And I've never been like a tech guy. Um, and never saw myself doing that, but I learned, I, I coded, you know, I used a no code platform, but you have to like, write, You know, still a considerable amount of code for it. And I, I did it all myself, learned about coding, kind of got into it, used it as a project and did about a year and a half of market research just to make sure I was tailoring it to the right, you know, uh, market. And then really finished the development over quarantine. I just spent 10, 12 hours a day, every day yeah. finishing it. And yeah, now now it's just um, you know getting it into the hands of the universities. MSU is uh, the plan is to roll it out at MSU as soon as events return and stuff like snow removal from the stadium for football games or ticket sales concessions. Um, yeah, just now extra sanitation for COVID is a huge thing that'll be used for. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a fun process, and you know I learn from experience. And then I go to a class where they're teaching me exactly what I just, you know, realized I really need. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps. They go hand in hand together really well. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun and, uh, it's, it's taken off. So it's kind of, um, all hands on deck right now, just working on it a ton, but okay. So it's actually in use at MSU right now. No. So I've been training the staff on it, but we haven't been able to use it yet until the events actually happen because of COVID and whatnot. Oh, okay. Um, Cause there's a, all right. There's but yeah. Now we're jobs. working. I'm, it's a, it's a countrywide sales push though right now to try to help other universities see how they can use it, you know, yeah, to get a bunch of people on board so that when things right. ramp up, they've already got mm. some sort of a platform to be able to s- staff what they need. Exactly. It, it's, it's something where I know so many people, it could help so many people. So I just really want to get it into their hands so they can use it, especially for the sanitation right now. There's so many people or so many universities are trying to get extra hands on deck to clean facilities. And people also want that quick cash, but they just don't have a way to reach them and yeah. facilitate that whole process in a timely manner, which is necessary with how quick things are changing. Um, so yeah, that's trying a, to help a, them. That's super a, that's clever. A, yeah. I mean, it goes be, way beyond universities. It's anything like, yeah. I mean, r- because the Craig, I, the Craigslist is the only other platform I could think of like that, and it's so outdated and awful that it. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It can go to the whole community, um, which is ultimately, you know, part of the 
goal is to expand but to where yeah yes yeah. starting with a, a niche like that uh so is it just you it is just me okay. and then uh, i have a a fair number of mentors that are like pretty involved okay um, cool one uh just incredible mentor he at one point we were calling every day or every other day and he's got coding background and, and helping me through that um, looking to take on some partners grow the team because really a business is about the team more than the product um but yeah i'm just making sure i get get the right fit um mm -hmm. of a team but yeah it's uh it's exciting for sure well and it's cool because it's tech and it allows you the flexibility to like continue riding yeah. at a high level versus most companies end up tying you down in a way where like you can't be working on it from the other side of the world or yeah you know yeah and i've got a quarantine coming up in like for 10 days in a hotel where i got when i land in switzerland <laughs> I better yeah, believe exactly. i'm gonna be working on that like every day so uh yeah it's it's good in that sense you kind of nailed it with that but and what is it called again i, I it's miss. posted software posted yeah. software posted like you posted a photo or a job mm -hmm. ideally and so posted software yeah and the app's the posted app so yeah that's so sick dude and think yeah, of thanks. all the free marketing you'll get from post it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, post it, man. Oh gosh. But yeah, so it's a uh, it's been a good process, but um I don't know, it works with the snowboarding, just being able to work on something while on the road, while in yeah. quarantine, while traveling mm -hmm. and um hopefully turn it into a career, but I'm also looking so what I would be doing this summer is internship with like financial advising or something like that. That's wow. something I'm also interested in, so that's so rad, man. Yeah. I feel like you just have so many incredible <laughs> talents. No. Yeah. Like, that's what I said when I we became Instagram friends and I did a little browsing. I was like, oh, we got to get him on the podcast because of all, all this uh, stuff. Thanks, man. I and appreciate then as it. soon as I reached out, you're like, oh, I just went back to Montana. Yeah, yeah. The timing was a little tough, but no, it's more so just a lot of interests. So i um, always looking to that's so cool. develop the skills for it. But yeah. So I guess... All right, then what's what's like the one that got away? What's the thing that like you haven't like oh. you want to get into this thing but you haven't had a, like your your way in yet or the timing hasn't been right to try it? Okay, this is going to be so random, man. You're never going to see this coming, but I play I compose like music, piano mm -hmm. music, classical music, and I like write my own music and I always wanted to share that with others, but I never I mean, wow. I don't have the recording <laughs> stuff for it. Like we were saying, gear in every yeah. hobby is just so much. Um, but yeah, that's something I could see myself doing later on. But yeah. Wow. Classic. So do you uh, like write the notes like on paper? Yeah. Well, and, and there's like software, you know, that you can. Oh, okay. You enter yeah, it on I your know, computer. It's, it's just like, have you ever seen sheet music? Yeah. 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 So it does that. Just like type in a paper and then you can print it. Okay. You enter it in on the software and, and then it like. You know, prints yeah, out but it makes it all pretty yeah exactly but yeah so where uh i guess what's the the thing that stopped you because wouldn't you just i mean i know literally nothing and maybe this is stupid but couldn't you just take a keyboard and plug it into garage band and record honestly it? yeah that's probably all it is <laughs> but like you were saying you're saying garage band <laughs> yeah we yeah. take I, half an hour every time i probably could sit down for, for an hour and and figure out how to <laughs> put a couple notes into that app but yeah i'll do it at some point right now i just play on my own right you got you got uh i play like all the time stuff. but it's, yeah it's just you have a, a you so know, classical though well and, and every and like a bunch of other things i guess i call it classical it's just kind of like solo piano music and stuff but yeah i uh john baptiste the dude who plays for stephen colbert i like really like listening to his music mm. And it's just like weird, like, cause some of his stuff is like very traditional and then other stuff is like, you have no idea what you're listening to. Yeah. But, uh, the more I watch it, I'm like, what a cool talent that would be to just be able to like start playing. Do you just keyboard. sit down and you just play and it just <sighs> whatever you want to do. You start with a couple chords and then as long as you just stick with those chords, you can play whatever pattern you want and you just go forever. And yeah, it just seems <laughs> so magical. and like. Just very yeah, free, very like free ridey. Like yeah, I'm gonna go over here and mess yeah. around in this key for a little bit, and then I'm gonna bounce around down to here. Bounce around. Yeah, you know when you're biking though, and you're maybe you're just on like a pump track, right? It's probably the best 
thing and you just because you don't have to really focus you're just on a pump track pump yeah. around and you just get like in a trance you forget about everything else and you just focus in on that that's like piano you just get to forget about everything else and just oh it play. seems so cool it's, <laughs> i mean you must be playing since you were a child for to have that kind of oh, <laughs> yeah i played since i was in I picked it up last week <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been like good. a week hobby yeah. no uh since i was probably like six but yeah i didn't really enjoy it until high school i'd say to be honest mm -hmm. so. Well, if you ever want to get in at the uh, the uh, symphony down in Durango. <laughs> with with Party with Dan? Well, Party Dave played. Party Dave. He played in the symphony. He knows nothing about music. Can't carry a note. Can't read sheet music. He literally can't even <laughs> sing you his favorite song or even like hum it. He's not musically talented. But it, his whole life he's wanted to play the kettle drums. And obviously, the only place you can really play the kettle drums is in an orchestra. And so my stepmom, like, deep cover, secret agent style, like, got in with all the right people and, like, <laughs> literally, like, Soviet sleeper cell, befriended all the people she needed to and, like, started greasing the palms that needed to be greased. And then after, like, two or three years of getting in tight with these people, she finally pulled the ask of, like, hey... My husband really wants to play kettle drums. Is that something you guys can make happen? And they're like, we don't do that. And she's like, think <laughs> again, friend. <laughs> and, uh, and party days yeah. in the symphony. And, and Just like that. So they somehow she gave them enough money. She'd literally been saving the whole time too. Like she knew this was not going to be a cheap endeavor because my dad's so bad. <laughs> and then uh, finally she gets him a spot. And then they're like, cool. Well, you just like send us a list of the instruments he knows how to play. And like, she goes, none. And they're like, oh, well, like, can he read sheet music? No. Can he like keep a tune or like a beat? No. <laughs> and he, he literally had to go into like training and he got to actually perform uh, the Star Spangled Banner, which doesn't have kettle drums. The, the best <laughs> I was going to say. I don't know what he was doing. He probably <laughs> hit it like four times. Yeah. But uh Obviously, through all that endeavor, I, b I bet we could get you a spot. Well, heck <laughs> it's yeah. got to be easier than getting him uh, involved. <laughs> no, that's an awesome story. Uh, though. So that that brings up, what do you listen to when you are? Oh yeah. I mean, do you listen to anything when you compete? Or yeah, I do. I listen to. Do you guys know Greta Van Fleet? There's that like sounds a rock super band. familiar. Just yeah. classic rock, but I mean, well, they're a new band. Yeah. Like they play classic okay. rock, mm -hmm. and they just yeah they're great so i stick on some of the rock songs there honestly i never listen to drake in except for like <laughs> stargate except for sometimes we, yeah he <laughs> yeah, just fits the vibe God's so playing yeah <laughs> hyped, yeah yeah no i listen to him but mostly i had this one song the cold wind by greta van fleet that i'd play at every stargate and so with snow with anything really if you have something that's constant when you're training and you you also yeah. have that constant in uh the competing mm -hmm. it helps you so i would listen to the cold wind whenever i was hitting like a big cliff in training and then i would also have that song going when i dropped in at every comp last year and so it got to the point where so my roommate ben i ride with him every day pretty much and he's like whenever i hear this song i get kind of like tense because i think something's like we're gonna drop yeah. into something just because every time we would hear it it's a, a gnarly like shoot or cliff but That's yeah i'd listen hilarious. to that song so all my gopro videos on instagram have that somewhat playing in the background <laughs> That's but so oh, that's funny. funny yeah um but listen to them a little bit drake um so never your own no yeah. <laughs> never some classical <laughs> dropping into a 30 foot cliff yeah. with some I'm listening beethoven to the, the in the fifth, back. yeah <laughs> yeah no uh no it's good i honestly just have it playing in my pocket straight out of the phone um yeah and I hear it in the start gate, and then once I drop in, I don't oh, hear Oh, so it. you don't even have it, like, in headphones? No. Um, I do, like, bef when I'm just chilling before yeah. the comp, but I put it there because I want to hear the snow under my feet. Like, if I hit an ice patch, you hear it, and it helps Ooh. your senses right away as opposed to not hearing it and feeling it first, you know? Really? So, yeah, I want to be able to hear everything. It's probably just something I weird I do. I hearing played mm, I, Yeah, I don't like to listen to music when I snowboard. Yeah, but it's fun because like I hear it before I get hyped up yeah, in, in Stargate, and then after, and if if you slow down, you're like on top of a cliff, and you like right before you, you hit it, you're like oh, it. that's that cool part of the song, like yeah, yeah and then you go back to 
drop him. But this year with the helicopter flying over, I think it might be hard to hear much. Hashtag hum- humble brag. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> <laughs> that's so sick dude yeah because they're probably they're filming yeah. from the helicopter for the yeah the the, yeah. the tv just yeah. stuff so i've i've low-key been thinking about them like is this gonna be like super loud just like but i probably won't hear anything you're so focused you know? i can't imagine yeah you're just gonna be like it's gonna just be what is exactly in front of you and yeah then, like, your actual sensations yeah i never hear the music anyways after i drop so it won't make a difference but. i didn't know that you didn't even like music when you snowboard dylan yeah I'm not doing anything crazy, but uh, that's like my why. favorite time to listen to music. Snowboarding's the only thing I've found that I can just be like chill. Mm-hmm. I have no desire to go like insanely fast or jump the biggest thing or like I just want to like enjoy the fluidity and like the smoothness. Like I can happily spend an entire day just cruising, just coasting, just cruising, yeah. like. Not ch- like not really challenging myself necessarily, but just like I'll put like something very mellow and like calming because mm-hmm. I'm a very high strung person in, in terms of like my energy. I'm not high strung in terms of like anxiety or anything. It's the opposite, but I'm just always at like, yeah, yeah, let's go. I'm having a good time. Yeah. So like snowboarding's the only thing I found where it like genuinely mellows me out to a point where I just like enjoy kind of doing nothing is like my equivalent of just it. throwing some party dave kettle but or kettle yeah. drums and oh, you're just my. having a great time <laughs> yeah. i know and they wouldn't let them film it so oh no, no that piece of well, gold is no not available to be actually did it yeah why uh, what an odd no you're not allowed thing. to have any kind of recording at the symphony and so interesting they were like look seriously like <laughs> can we just get a photo and they're like no I think it's to discourage people from trying to do the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I can imagine that. Uh, so what are like the different types of ice in like snow and like what are sounds you're listening to? You know, I honestly like don't four? even, I think it's just subcon. Yeah, that's right. You know? It's like uh, just you. You just know it. I don't, yeah, and you yeah. probably don't even hear the ice too much. I just, especially if you're in free ride because it's just, you know, ho- well. In the tour, it should be a lot of pow. In the qualifiers, it's definitely not. But I don't know. It's weird because in half pipe, I always had music in headphones. Mm-hmm. Cause I didn't want to hear anything else going on. I just wanted to focus. <laughs> I didn't want to remember I was hitting a 30 foot <laughs> yeah. high air. Well, there's yeah. people on the deck, you know, mm-hmm. of the half pipe. And so you're like, you know, going oh, over yeah. people talking. You don't want to be like in the air upside down and hear like, yeah, I'm going to go like get pizza after this. Like, you don't want to be like paying attention. <laughs> um, so I'd throw that on and I'd. I'd again put the same song on every practice and you do like so many laps every day, but everything's the exact same. You're taking off the exact same spot of the wall each time, each hit. So it got to the point where at the same exact part of each, the song, I'd always be doing the same trick. What? So it's like at this same drop or note, like I'm throwing this trick and the same one I'm doing this because it's the exact same thing in the half pipe. It's like clockwork, but because you, you hit play and then you drop. So it's the same timing, but... Whoa. That, that was really cool. That was fun. I can imagine. Yeah, because then I'm sure your run changes as you're like, yeah. oh, if I just like go an extra foot down, I'll like time it just right. Yeah. to Because like, <laughs> that's got to be the best feeling. I think about it when I'm listening to music, riding my bike, where I'm like every now and again, a note or a drop lines up exactly yeah. with a jump or a hit. Oh, or it's like, perfect, right? <laughs> yeah, or like I'll do a tail whip right is like some weird like wah, 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 wah <laughs> happens. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that was so sick. I will never forget one time I put Lil Wayne's a milli. Yeah. Yeah, blasting in my headphones. <laughs> and I dropped in. I was like, oh my, like this is some heavy bass. Like I can't yeah. hear anything going on right now. <laughs> but I'm flying into this 20-foot wall like with oh, Lil Wayne's bass yeah. in the background. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. See, that's what I try to do with editing, where I but where I can move stuff around, in, like to time. Editing. Yeah, it's the same. But yeah, in, same. In thought. real life, I've never like mess mess with that. Like trying to do that. That's pretty. Funny. But it sounds like you totally get the. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. But it's like I have that exact control of it. Where like, all right, mm. I have to take three frames off of the front of this video to make it like when the like the the base hits or whatever is when the person lands or you're drifting it your mega turn yeah <laughs> yeah that's when the snow goes from fast mode to slow mo exactly on the hard yeah drive. absolutely yeah. <laughs> see i literally think 
of myself as like, what would this look like in a video? Like, because I've watched <laughs> Dylan's videos yeah. since I started, I like see something or like I'll hear a song where I'm like, oh, that'd make a real good cut for like, yeah. this would be like where you go from one angle of the se- the shot to like the back angle of the shot or like, oh, this is the part where someone's just stacking a lip with a shovel. Like it's if all, you're into filming. Yeah you can picture what you'd put to a song, right? Or like, yeah. are you in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I feel like people think that way if you film ever, but it's well, really cool. I don't know. It's so, so funny. So do you hear, do you like ever think like, do you ever just like hear a song? And you're like, Oh, <laughs> this is what I need to be just cruising some shoots in. Like, this is the best thing. If I could just hit a shoot and yeah. this song's going on. Or is it so, are you really careful to like make sure you always have the same song? So you uh, I mean, somehow last year was always that song just because it really hyped me up. Like you should go check it out after. I mean, yeah. maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't, but um, probably. probably, but yeah, I don't know. I always picture, I'm, I'm super into filming. I want to transition my career into filming eventually um, because I, I got into free ride and a lot of other hobbies because I watched people do it in films mm-hmm. and they like inspired me to do something I didn't even know was a, a possibility. And so if I can help others get inspired to go have like awesome experiences themselves, I think that's pretty fulfilling and fun to do. So I'd and love to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd love to do that. I'd love to get in the filming and I hear a song. I'm like, okay, yeah, that would be a sweet, you know, yeah. shot like an inspirational like video um so speaking of filming and videos and such i'm sure for someone like yourself that's into free ride that's been snowboarding since you were so young at a very serious like professional level essentially um do you remember like the place you were when the art of flight came out i love that that, that i love that question so much that changed your life oh my gosh yeah it did Art of Flight's so cliche, like everyone's like Art of Flight, but there's a reason, man. That that film is is killer. It's the perfect yeah. video. No, it's I, incredible. Everything about it was dialed. Yeah, my brother-in-law bought me it for Christmas. So I have two older sisters. Um, the oldest is married, um, and so yeah, my brother-in-law just bought me the Art of Flight for Christmas. I remember getting it and just being so amped and watching it that night. Oh, so probably you several even times. Seen it. I don't know if I had, I pro, you know, to be honest, I probably had, but I just watched that so many times. I used to put like the soundtrack from the art of flight in my headphones, yeah. go up to copper, you know, big time <laughs> copper yeah, and pretend I was like dropping in with the heli and all these guys. And like, <laughs> I would, I'd visualize it, man. I'm going down a mogul run under like accelerator chair and I'm like, this is sick. Yeah. And yeah. And so I would, I would, I would dream about that. But, uh, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, one of you guys make a <laughs> sound of the helicopter yeah, blades. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Phantom yeah. cam slow mo. <laughs> yeah. No, that 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 film is awesome, and uh, yeah, some of the some of the guys in that I think they'll be able be able to ride with. But yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, yeah. If anybody who's watching hasn't seen that, they should check it out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's free riding. Whether or not you're even like into action sports, it's a yeah. beautifully done. I remember I didn't know what we were watching. My buddy David threw it on because he just bought it on like iTunes. So, mm-hmm. And we were just happened to be at his house. And he's like, you guys have to see this. And I was like, okay, like whatever. And then like five seconds in, I'm like inches from the TV. Like in yeah. everyone's like, this is amazing. Yeah. It's so good. As you say it, I completely forgot about that. Like I have somebody in mind that I definitely have to go show that like right after this. Because <laughs> yeah. that'll get somebody into it for sure. Yeah, there's the a couple uh, decent mountain bike videos. Mm. Similar, but it's never quite... Nothing will compare because it had just never been done like that before. Yeah. Like, just, I remember growing up on, like, Warren Miller films, and they were always sick. But that video, for there's, like, before Art of Flight and after. Yeah, it's a milestone it's that in, the, that in the sport, for sure. Since it came out. Yeah. Have yeah. you filmed any video parts? No, well, not really. I was supposed to have a part in a film this last year, and then my segment was going to be filmed in like April, March, March, April, and that obviously was when the world yeah. flipped upside down. So I didn't. I got two days of filming, and I got a part 
of two days of filming. So it was it was really sick. Um, full circle the film. I think it'll go on iTunes in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's an environmental ski and snowboard film. So I got a little bit of insight to it. And it was really fun with some good friends filming it. It's a great film, but uh, nothing too big yet. I haven't yeah. had too much time, but I, I want to. Man, that's the dream. <laughs> well, in 2022, it, look out. Yeah, right? <laughs> after this World Free Ride Tour. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you've thought about this at all, but that I would recommend for my travels is uh, document, like, as lame as it is, as some people think it is, to, like, vlog, like, vlog these trips to... Mm-hmm. Uh, Switzerland to um, it's Andorra, Andorra, Andorra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> the tiny place next to Spain. you. Whether you put it, whether you edit it and put it anywhere or not, but like for yourself to look back on in any amount of time, like I, you, you should definitely like. Yeah, it's a good, good. Really, like you've got the GoPro. Just like tell like show some stuff that's going on and talk about it. Like you, you will love it in even a couple months down the road. Just to look back on. Yeah. yeah. But then imagine like 10 years, like when, when you're, well, I guess even 10 years, you won't be at the tail end, 20, 30 years at the tail end of your, mm-hmm. your career to look back on your first season on the, uh, the free ride world tour. Yeah. You will love it. That's some great but advice. If yeah, you I can see. like actually have the time to, to edit it and put it on YouTube, I feel like people would actually be interested in that as well. But even if it if it gets no audience and you don't care, just to do it for yourself. Would Absolutely, be, yeah. Just look back on. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel it like that's... to have a film or friend do ninety percent of the work <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I? What was I saying? Oh, sorry. Uh, vlogging oh no but that's kind of like at least right now who knows in the future but like that's kind of where like these itunes films are getting rarer and rarer and it's awesome when you have the opportunity to be a part of them but like to build your own following Mm -hmm. is going to be huge like to the point where you can then have your own dedicated filmer come with you ideally at some point if yeah, just need to get that following. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. But I feel like even just getting that started on your own, you can do some really cool stuff. Absolutely. And that's just an idea that I had. But like I said, if you don't even put it on YouTube yet, you just stack it on a hard drive somewhere mm-hmm. in 20 years to look back on your first year on the tour, I think will be really sick. Yeah, definitely. I should. For sure. Yeah, a lot of footage of him just in a hotel room working on his laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, day twenty-seven I mean, hey, of quarantine. But in all honesty, like that's Even kind that's, of the thing. It's been like I've been on quarantine for nine days. I've forgotten I need to shower. Like <laughs> it's yeah, been whatever it three looks like. days in the wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, even some of that maybe for like, if you're, uh, fingers crossed, your app blows up. Like even mm. being able to look back on that. Yeah, absolutely. but like get. I'm talking more like the scouting missions, like you're out there looking at it and you just like 30 seconds of your thoughts, like, oh, I'm nervous, but I'm thinking like this, this, whatever. Yeah, I should. I do the, <laughs> I do the Snapchat updates all the time. Like, well, I'll update you after. Like, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'll see you from here, Stretcher. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. yeah. It's always got, people are kind of annoyed now because we're always like ice climbing and we throw the Kokomo, you know, like Aruba, Jamaica. Uh, yeah. And everybody's like, oh, man, that song. Like, once you hear that song, it's stuck in your head for the rest of, like, you guys are going to have it in your yeah. mind tonight. For <laughs> sure. No, that's a huge problem in my life <laughs> is trying to sleep because songs get stuck in my head. Yeah. So that thanks. one. Is, yeah. So we're ice climbing. We climb at night all the time. And you're just, you're so freezing and you're halfway up. You're like, can't feel my hands. And you're just like, Aruba, Jamaica. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, on a, I'm on an island. Like, so, yeah. I do the, long story short, I do the little bit of vlog kind of in that sense but i should uh well because the problem with snapchat is then then it goes away so if you did it on the gopro and then then you throw it on your helmet and do the run and then pull it off and like oh my god whatever i did yeah it's not just saves in my opinion like i would love to watch that honestly like that's kind Mm. of why i'm saying it is because yeah yeah like that would be just a, a cool thing to watch but for sure 
Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to do it. I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> Dylan inspired me. <laughs> and then I'll just tomahawk. This vlog this, this is for Gillis Bolt. Yeah. <laughs> this is because yeah. of you. And then just tomahawk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just end over end over end. Oh. oh, dude. I just got this visual of you, like, as you hit a cliff, like, just like, launching off some cliff and you're just like this is for you dylan like, <laughs> dylan falls <laughs> you just like over out of control <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> oh man no i Dude. have like i told you i visualize everything man i've got just to the details of everything i want to do that's such an impressive skill i don't think that that is a common trait among people like we i think it's common to obsess and visualize things in that, like, th- I'm, this is what's happening, or, like, this is what I want to happen, or I'm afraid of go- is going to happen. But I think it's a very rare quality to do what you're doing, which is to actually visualize what, like, on purpose, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very thought out and methodical, and you're like, no, this is exactly, and it's part of some larger process, not just, like, Oh, I'm nervous about this. And then that's your entire, like then you're visualizing about it in a sense. But like what you're describing, I think is such a a unique trait. What was that something you've always done? Or is that something that a coach has kind of helped you with or? So the first person really inspired me to do it. My coach in half pipe, one of them was Bud Keen. So he's former U S Olympic half pipe coach. Um, Sean White's coach. Okay. I thought the name sounded familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So just Sean White. Never heard of him, (laughs) but no, Bud. Bud is just an incredible person, but also just his coaching is next level. I mean, it's insane. And so one of his things is always, um, you know, visualization is huge, and he taught me that. And and every coach, you know, has has brought it up. So my visualization this year is going to be a little different because it's going to be a little more broad because I don't know what's going to happen necessarily. So I'll visualize to an extent, but I don't want to over visualize because I don't actually know what it'll be like. Mm -hmm. Um, but in the past with the qualifiers, I mean, we would, so what we do is the night before we lay, you just kind of like lay on your back and just close your eyes and visualize everything. And we would walk it through with our coach. So we knew the lady's name who would be the start starter. We knew like, what she would say when she's calling up. We're like, all right, she's going to ask, call her name, Michael Mon. We're going to start gate. This is how we're going to feel. You're going to feel like nervous, this, that, and the other. Um, Whoa. You roll into your first cliff. You're going to see the tree on your left. Like there's going to be that extra bump before because we saw it was pretty rutted. And then like you visualize every single thing. Wow. Yeah. Um, my coach would always be like, you're going to have the that song playing. You know? yeah. <laughs> visualize that. Um, everything down to the T because then when you get there, you've been there done that in your mind at least and then things change you know as you go but you're able to adapt more because yeah the leap you're ready from for what it. you expected to what's happened is at least smaller because you've been right. there before yeah. right in yeah your mind. just in your mind you know, i visualize wow. so much man just very detailed but uh um probably at least 50 60 times the day leading up to it and then yeah you're like air you're gonna grab this grab it's going to tweak yeah. in this way and this you're going to be a mute here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to land and you're going to be thinking, crap, I'm hauling really fast right now, but you already know you're going to feel that. So be ready for it. Like, you know, you're going to be on the edge of, <laughs> so just it's be ready feel for it. Like you're out of control, but that's okay. Cause you're expected. <laughs> exactly. to be out of control. You're going to yeah. get there and it's going to look really scary and steep, but that's yeah. only because it's really scary and steep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if it looks big, it's cause it is. It's cause it is. <laughs> you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the things too, it's just like, you're going to get to this cliff and you're not going to want to go fast because it's going to be big and like scary, but go fast. Cause yeah. if you don't, you're not going to make the landing. And so like just telling myself that a hundred times the night before I'm like, okay, I'm going to show up. And I'm like, sometimes even like talking to myself as I'm going, I'm like, go fast. Like you're going to hit yeah. this fast and like talk yourself through it. So in the tour, they have GoPros on you at all times and they take that film I think sometimes they even switch to it live. Like you can now go live to the GoPro view. Jeez. Like, so I better not be like singing Aruba, Jamaica. You or should. Like, <laughs> you honestly, totally if you should. were, dude, like, that <laughs> would go that. insanely popular. Oh, yeah, if you, you're going to hear some, yeah. some funny commentate. I commentate as you I go down. Sing, I'm like, like the let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that like humanizes you. I feel yeah, like yeah. you, 
I, I mean, I've never seen it before, but I would be a fan of if somebody was just singing <laughs> yeah. while they're like freaking hauling. Yeah. Down yeah. Like mountain. I'm pitching like Dennis Anderson is like the peak of BMX riding right now, especially cause he's the best. Uh, but I just love the idea of like you watching him do some insane thing that's never been done. And he's just like singing <laughs> Aruba, Jamaica, and they're just like double trucking a 30 stair or something insane. Yeah. Like what is going on in his head? Well, you'll hear me. I'll be on top of like a 30 footer. I'll be like off the Florida Keys. Yeah. <laughs> just like it, but more so worried about, yeah. you know, every, I, I'm not somebody that like ever starts to say choice words or whatever. But like if I'm snowboarding and I hit a flat landing, I might like accidentally let one yeah. slip if that's on live TV. But you know, I have a mouth guard in me. It'll be muffled. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's so wild. So, I mean, but they've got to be prepared for that. You can't expect yeah, someone no. to go hit like a 40 foot <laughs> clip and then be like, what? An expletive came out? That's insane. <laughs> right. Well, and it's not television. That's the thing. Yeah. There, there's no FCC controlling the internet. I'm, yeah, you're right. I think you can say whatever you want. <laughs> um, now it's just cussing all the way through. <laughs> I'm uh, so scared. <laughs> Uh, so that's visualizing like your actual like snowboarding runs in like very specifically. Do you ever, do you do like life visualizations? Like, do you have a, a, like a visualization of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to school. I'm developing this app. This app, the app is going to do this for me. Mm. And, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. I visualize kind of everything. Um, not like over visualize, you know, but I, I, I visualize a lot. I'm, I'm big into public speaking. So I do deliver, you know, talks and whatnot. And that I run through so many times and, um, I'll go to, if I can, I'll go to the place that I'm giving the presentation and I'll like, you know, dress up. And if I like need to be in a suit or whatever, like I'll do that so that I'm like Whoa, in the same wow. environment, just why not? Right. Like you get in the same mindset when you do that. And so I'll go like practice in that, you know, auditorium or whatever it may be a ton and roll through and, and then visualize and then once you do that you don't have to stick to the script because things are always going to change yeah. right but but the thing is that you know the script and you know what you can stray from as in and, and then you can always tie it back that's so crazy. yeah as opposed to just if i went into a, a talk you know somewhat blind then if something goes off on a tangent i'm like okay wait where was i you know what but I visualize wow. a ton. So that, and then like in life, like you're saying, um, can't quite think of examples, but I definitely do. Oh, that's super cool. That's really I cool. I think it, I mean, it's obviously working. Like, did you, before you were on the actual world tour, did you, I imagine you visualized yourself on the world tour. Yeah. And then now it's coming true. So it just, it literally proves that it, yeah. It, works for you not yeah it's, not everyone, it's but. definitely a key piece to the puzzle mm -hmm. um visual i always try to visualize myself at the highest standard you know like i don't <laughs> you're never gonna visualize yourself at, at, a, at the semi-finals right yeah. you're gonna visualize yourself <laughs> winning the finals or like sticking and sometimes in my visualization like i fall like i'm like what what like what? And i'm like so then i gotta go back right and i gotta land it like 10 15 more times in my mind because you never want to have that in your mind yeah exactly um but yeah, yeah, just visualizing at the top of the game, um, and then and then visualizing the hardships that come with it too. Like I'm not only gonna visualize me going off the 30 foot cliff at the bottom of the central couloir on the back. Like I'm gonna visualize the fact that halfway through I'm gonna be hauling and I'm gonna be like, oh dang, I'm going a little <laughs> faster than I want to be, and I'm gonna picture that feeling of, oh crap, right, and then. Which that is one of the best feelings in life. Oh yeah, as just an action hauling. sports athlete, that again, just sailing past yeah. comfort zone, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, like you're fully committed, <laughs> is the best feeling. Yeah, the only thing that makes it better is your homies cheering you on from the top, right? Like, oh yeah, <laughs> like, and I guess the only thing that's better is if you walk away from the backside, like you stick it, right? Yeah, like, that's it's a key fun, part. Even if you don't, you're like, whoa, that was a rush. But when you actually like roll out of it in our case or ride out of it in your case, like yeah. you just that there's no, cause you shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah, and yet you so here great. you go. Like just, uh, when was the last time you scared yourself like that? Where you oh, were like, gosh. wow, I'm legit. Like this not is long ago. Far <laughs> not out of control. Long. Yeah. 
I mean, in snowboarding or anything? Like, anything. Oh, well, I, I was like... ice climbing the other day, and I'm, like, newer to ice climbing. It is my third season, but I, have, I haven't done too much leading or anything like that. And mm-hmm. I, so I led my first route. And I showed up, and I was like, I know I'm going to, again, visualization. Like, I knew I was going to be nervous. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to be nervous, but I'm going to show up. I'm just going to go right into it. Like, no thinking. Yeah. Just see it. Be like, this is what it is, and do it. Because I had been looking at it for years, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I know what it is. Ice was way worse than I thought halfway up. Stuff was breaking off. Like, my ice screw was jammed. So every ice screw I had to take off my left side of my harness, put in my mouth, like switch oh. hands. But I was like, all right, I'm in it. So I'm committed. And yeah. I know that I can do this as if I, like, if I focus. So, yeah, that was kind of scared myself a bit. Oh. But uh, it just, you guys know, with any extreme sports, happens all the time. And it's the best feeling. Yeah, you just got to be smart with it. And, I, I'm definitely, my mentality has switched a lot since my head injury. Um, I so, can imagine, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I realize I have so many other passions that lie outside of anything physical, like, well, like a snowboarding or anything. Well, up, too. Yeah, definitely. Like, definitely. even though you're still young, the, right now, like, a year or two makes such a big difference mm-hmm. versus, like, I'm not that much older, but I've noticed, like, I feel like until you hit like 35, like each year does make a difference. Like I remember feeling very different about a lot of things at 27 that I do at 28, just based on like that one year. I was like, Oh, actually I do have things outside of BMX that I'm interested. Like, wow, I went a month without riding my bike or like whatever it is. Yeah. And, and, um, in the reality of it is (laughs) the things that we do, but like I, I, I don't want to talk for you guys too much, but like, at least what I do is like, I do a lot of stuff where you actually could die. Like yeah. if you, if you really mess it up and then the cool thing is like, you know, you're probably not going to cause you, yeah. you're smart about it and you make calculated risks, but eventually like I'm like have some other life goals, you know, like that I can't put myself in those positions anymore. Even now, like that switch flipped, I think like a year and a half ago. And so I feel like I'm a little more calculated than a lot of people who probably, you know, do this, but it is what it is. I mean, but it's clearly working, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Enough. why mess with a, a thing that's working? Yeah. So, yeah. That's so rad. I'm glad that you're the first guest that I've had that thought of, like, I want to talk about that feeling of like just watching comfort zone sail by you're in deeper than you should. Cause I feel like, that experience can be related to things that aren't action sports, Mm, mm -hmm. you know, like that's just where our base of knowledge and like experience is. But I feel like you could apply that to so many mundane things in life. Well, I imagine in your business, you you feel that sometimes and you will definitely feel that more times where you don't know what you're doing and you're figuring it out anyway. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think there's, if there's anything, I don't want to say like fake it till you make it, but I think I've learned that a lot of people are doing that in their careers. Cause it's yeah. all about learning. You're always learning, right? Like I'm doing things in my business that I'm like, okay, I got to go, you know, do X, Y, Z. And I never thought I'd be doing X, Y, Z for another five years. <laughs> I'm no way qualified for this. Yeah. yeah. But, but I'm going to learn and qualify myself for it. Like, yeah. so going from being completely unqualified to qualified and then some like knowing you know your stuff yeah and you're the you're the person to do it like and some others can trust you to do it um that's that's awesome and uh yeah like you're saying just with anything in life like uh public speaking people's comfort zones are like way yeah. over there right and and they have to push past that for public speaking for was that something that you found to be like naturally ah uh, i guess Enjoyable. Parts of it. Yeah, parts of it. I get really nervous in front of people though, but then um I think I've got I've gotten better with that. But it's something that I enjoyed pushing past. There's some comfort levels that I don't enjoy going past, and there's some that I like feeling uncomfortable with. Mm-hmm. And that's one of them for sure. because um, when did you start public speaking? I think honestly freshman year of college. I took a public speaking class and I got the opportunity to speak at an event from that. And I said yes and did that. And I also like bypassed the final. So it was nice. But yeah, I did that and it was good. It was really fun. And I grew I'm always trying to do something that I can grow through. Right. And then help others along the way. And I feel like public speaking is one of those things. So 
I love public speaking. That's why I was at. Yeah? Heck yeah. I that's, was just born without the part of my brain that's afraid of that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's Well, how are you dealing with that? Uh, <laughs> not good. Not good. It's dramatically better. I've known Dylan for a long time. I have improved. Dramatically yeah. better, um, yeah. Yeah. I, and I think um, like the vlogging, the YouTube stuff has helped with that. The podcast has definitely mm. helped. Uh, but that's still just like a, a one person or just me and the camera or yeah. whatever. But like a lot of people public. see it, but not there with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I would probably struggle if mm. I had to like, if so, they were like, oh, give, give a 12 minute Ted talk. I would be like, yeah, I don't, I yeah. don't know about that. The I thing mean, it would be fun to say yes and like push past it, but it would be, it would be a, a tough, a tough one. Yeah, the thing I, I, the game changer for me was to, when I realized everybody else is just like you. They have the exact <laughs> yeah. same, everybody knows what it's like to be in your shoes when you're doing that. Even the CEO of the, the biggest company in the world is the most professional person. They go home at night and they have a family life just like you do and they're just a normal person. And like, everybody's like that. So yeah, you act in a different way, but everybody gets it. Everybody has those embarrassing moments of those feelings and... That kind of was a switch for me in a lot other areas of life too. It's like everybody you pass is living just as complex of a life as you are, right? But with public yeah. speaking, it helps because you're like, pressure's hey, off. You look, <laughs> you look real professional in a yeah. suit, but I know you're like, you know, yeah, just like everybody you're else. You're clowning around. Yeah, the you're moment cl- you get around the curtain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that helps. Everybody says picture everybody naked. I'm like, no, that does not work. For no. Me. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a similar idea that you know so. Oh, that's so cool. I uh, I'm just floored at how many things you have accomplished or are in the midst of accomplishing. <laughs> at 21, yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think it, thank you. Most people are that uh, that far along. You're just so driven. Well, I appreciate. it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Impressive, yeah. Well, it, it's you know the people you surround yourself with that like help you rise to that. So. All right. So then, because I'm a big I I. I'm doing a thing right now uh, where I'm writing out like essentially just like I love you cards to everyone in my life that's important to me. I've got like this massive list. I already regret coming up with the idea because <laughs> it's like huge. It's this daunting task now. But uh, they all start with like I love you. And then it's just me like saying like, hey, thanks for doing this for me in my life and this for the. So let's take a moment. What are what, you just mentioned? Like, wow, it's the people you surround yourself with. Who are some shout outs? Oh, you just want to holy be like cow, for? man. I could, where do we even begin? Also, I love that you have such a big list that that's daunting. Like that's the coolest problem. Oh, it's so overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. My wife was like, oh, I'll sign the cards too. And I was like, do you really want to agree to that? Like, wait till you see the list. And then she was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, I mean, well, obviously like starting with family, right? Just them helping elevate you and, um, and whatnot. Just like my sister's parents, um, everybody even that brother-in-law you know yeah. like um and then just and then some of my friends like uh in every aspect people can elevate you in any aspect and the people i've met in college especially that just have goals and they're driven and and they help keep you accountable right like yeah. everybody has bad days um and and when they have a bad day you're like hey man like you really told me to help you out with that let's let's bump it up and then they do the same for you and so that's that's been incredible um People like my coaches and my friends. Um, yeah, I've met some just incredible people. Like my friend Mitch, first guy that comes to mind. Mitch, just one of the most driven dudes you'll ever meet. Um, and and we help keep each other accountable. I'm super big into mentors, so I have a ton of people that are just excelling in the places I want to excel in, right? And um, people like Brian, who's helped me with my app and... I have another business coach. His name's Joaquin, and just like these people that keep me accountable, and I rise to their level, and or at least try. And um, yeah, I don't know. Um, then another person like my friend, or yes, so many friends, man. I can't even yeah. like start the list. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't have to be too crazy, but yeah, yeah. Um, for example, Caitlin. So she, she's just incredibly driven. What the driven thing is, what I think sticks out, like you said, when people have a goal and they're just they're determined to work towards it. Um, being around people like that. And she, she has her own 
startup venture software as well and just watching her like work on it and find the balance too of like you always have to find the balance of what working towards your goals and then taking time for yourself right and for others and just seeing people like her and mitch and that can find that balance um yeah i just want to rise to their level and um be like those people and so then you know people like oh you know you're doing x y and z it's like all these people are doing x y and z and i'm just catching up catching up (laughs) exactly well i'd like to say thank you on behalf of myself because I am naturally a sedentary creature. I'm happy if I'm homeless under a bridge. I can't <laughs> can't stop from just being like perfectly happy and content and being around people like yourself and and people who are just amazingly driven remind me like, oh, that's right. I do have some talents and I should be putting those to work. I shouldn't be happy with the bare minimum. And I, I definitely appreciate just yeah. you taking some time to chat with us tonight. Thanks, man. And I know that we've probably been we've been talking so long, but just one last thing too, what you're saying there is like how you're just always happy. And I don't want to kind of confuse the having to reach those goals as being happy. Like Yeah. Always being happy with what you have is like so key. Yeah. Because if that's a great point. Yeah, if you're only gonna be happy when the app blows up or when you make the world tour or when, you know, you land a TED talk. Like that you're always gonna be chasing the next thing. Um like I have big faith and like the quote of the day on my Bible app was like, always be content with what or always be joyful and thankful for what you have. And I'm like, that is so true, man. Like always what we have is so great. And, um, I think yeah, that's it's when you, not for the flowers in the field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you just, you're always, uh, you know, that's what motivates you to reach the next level, but always, you know, you don't need to reach that next level to be happy with what you already have. So when usually, at least in my own experience, enjoying myself where I'm at now makes the whole journey a whole lot less painful. And because it's a whole lot less painful, you enjoy it more. And because you're enjoying yourself more, more people are excited to work with you to help you get where you're going Mm -hmm. because you're good company. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like if, if the people that I look up to weren't joyful, I wouldn't, you know, want to, be around them as much or they wouldn't inspire me as much but they are and then and vice that, versa exactly so that's the best way you can help others is by being thankful and happy with where you're at and being like and we can do more like so yeah that's fantastic yeah, that's awesome well yeah we're basically right at an hour and a half on the dot we Sweet. always end with the same question it's the best question ever <laughs> uh this is a completely selfish thing it's just for you it doesn't have to be a good story or anything like that Uh, But we always end with, when you picture the word joy, what comes to mind? Family and friends. Uh, Just people that you know would do anything for you, and you would do anything for them. And then whatever you're doing with them, uh, snowboarding, skydiving, or just sitting on the couch, you're going to be happy. Like, if you're with the people that you care about. So that's joy to me. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So what I, gosh, I could ask you guys, I know we'd go over time, but, um, yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. Yeah, From from Montana and yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. And we will be watching on, uh, (laughs) free ride world tour.com. Free ride world tour. Free ride, com. Yeah. Listen for Kokomo playing in the, Dude, <laughs> I will literally cry tears laughing so hard. I'm, I'm going to play it for you. Just play it while you're yeah, watching exactly. it. At the watch parties. Well, yeah. Just picture it. Yeah. That's Perfect. so fantastic, man. Well, we are just rooting for you and good luck with all the many, many endeavors. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks guys.